Hi, this is Bobby from Dig Coding, and today I'm going to show you how to use Drop Zone JS in a Django project. So this is the project. This is on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. I have already created an account and I've also created a super user, so I can just walk you through this um, this app. Um, if you've seen previous videos, you will notice that they all look very, very similar. They're all based on a user auth um, application that we've got on GitHub. All I'm doing with each of these tutorials is I'm adding different JavaScript libraries or I'm adding APIs. In previous videos, we've added Braintree to take online payments. We've added Stripe also to take online payments. We've added Google Places API. Um, we have added Twilio for two-step verification. This app does have Google Places API for adding, if you look in profile to the left here, you can add an address and it pre-populates. So it uses Google Places API to predict an address that you're, you're typing, which is good, which is great. But we've also got add images and we've got gallery. So if we add images, this drop zone is programmatically added using JavaScript. Uh, you can, if you go onto Drop Zone, as uh, website, it's got some instructions on how to just slot in a Drop Zone from um, their box, which is great. But I've programmatically added it because I wanted some extra features, uh, and I'll go through that JS file in this tutorial. But uh, if you click it, it'll open up your, your directory so to select a file or an image. In this case, the image cannot be more than 500 KB in this tutorial, but you can change that. And we can add up to 10 images in this drop zone. So if I open the directory, this, I'm using images of myself, I just drag one in there, add image, perfect, now visit your gallery. I'll remove that alert, actually, we don't need it. Click OK, click in gallery, and then we've got a gallery here. So as you drag them in, it doesn't automatically add them to the gallery, you need to explicitly submit them which is an option in drop zone. You can turn it off or on or true or false, but that is the project. Like I say, it's on GitHub, the description, sorry, the link is in the description. So let's jump into the code. This is GitHub. This is the project, it's did Django drop zone. What you need to do is you need uh, to set up a directory and a virtual environment on your machine. You need to clone this repository and then install all of the requirements. Uh, you've got the normal requirements as previous uh, applications but or previous projects but in this case we need a pillow so to, to handle the images so get that all sorted on your machine and then we'll go through this um, this tutorial so what have we got uh, installed we need to go to settings.py we need to add some email backend settings and the Google API so here's settings no, this is the project. If we go into settings here, we've imported OS because we're using static files and media files. The user app is in installed apps. No other changes to previous projects other than at the bottom here. So we've got static files, DERS. We always have static in these projects because we're handling logos and CSS and JavaScript. But in this case, we've got media files because we're handling images against user profiles. So you need this in a static DERS, so it's os.path.join base directory media. And then you have you need to explicitly say a media URL, which in this case is slash media. And then we need a media root, which is the same as static root apart from it says media CDM. And then we've got the normal login URL, log out, redirects and whatnot. And then we've got an email backend. We're using Google as I always do, but you can use any backend but configure it correctly and Google API key. Sorry, the, this here is a Google app password. I've got a video showing you how to get one, it's very easy. Uh, you will need an app password if you're using uh, Outlook. And this is the Google API key for the address auto populate. So you'll need them for this project, but if you tweak it, you can remove the Google API key if you like. But our settings, if you go into URL, so the main directory URL, we've included the uh, user's URLs, which is the user app. So we're brought in from conf or Django conf, the settings and the static libraries, and we've added them here to the URL pattern. So static is added, or the static URL is added to the URL patterns in debug mode, and so is the media URL. So that is what we've done there. Static, you can see here we've got dropzone.js, and we've also got dropzone, uh, the directory here. I've downloaded that straight from their website. So 
we go here dropzone.js or dropzonejs.com great docs it walks you through step by step which is great but in installation here you just need to click here um, simple example source and you click that you download the files you add them to static happy days that's all you need to do back in here then so that's the static the user model so let's, let's start with models.py user profile no different we have imported pill so if you notice in requirements it says um, pillow so we need pillow to handle the images in this case the user profile hasn't changed so the user model we fire up the user model from using signals which I've talked about before We've got user token that handles the email verification and password when you've forgotten a password and we've got user image so there we've got a foreign key which links it to the Django user model and we've got an image field here which we call user image and then we upload it to user images and because we've set up the media URL and the URL patterns in the directory url.py uh, it sets up when you add an image to a user profile it creates media CRN and it creates a directory called user images user images user images so that's how that works so if we look at signals quickly um, we importing the user model from uh, the built-in Django user models authentication model we're bringing in receiver and we're bringing in user profile from our models now we use the receiver decorator post save which is from signals and the sender is user so as the built-in user model is sending a signal to this file here and the signal is to, the the function is called create profile so we've got the sender the instance created and keyword arguments so if a user is created then we create a user profile so that's how we do that we register that signal here in apps.py so here the class user configs which this is written as you create an app in a project this comes straight out of the box but we have to add this here so the function ready and we import user.signals so that's how we get the signals to work if you're new to using signals you may forget to do that I did that a few times and um, it takes a little while to figure out what's happening so URLs we've added images we've added gallery and we've added this one here called drop zone image now that is handed in an Ajax call from drop zone which we'll look at now let's go into views I won't look into uh, look at sign up if you want to look at sign up sign in sign out what else have we got? We've got verification, forgotten password. There's a few views. If you want to deep dive into those, I've got other videos on my channel which goes into great depth on what they do and how they work. We don't need to do it in a tutorial. You're trying to find out how to use Drop Zone, right? So, profile. Then we've got images. Image, this is a very, very basic view. It has got the login required decorator on the view, so only authenticated users can get there. That is the view where we've got the drop zone itself. So we're looking at the images.html file. Gallery, same decorator, but in this case, what we're doing, we're pulling in the all objects in user image, the model user image, and we're filtering the user against the request.user. So this is the authenticated user in gallery. So it's the gallery.html. And lastly, we've got this here, which is drop zone image. So this is just a view that handles the creation of user image objects. So we're getting the user from the request.user. So this is request.method equals a post. Getting the user from the request itself, because we're passing request into the function. The image is request.files.get. And the keyword is image. Now we explicitly call it image in the JS file. Next image equals user image objects create so we're creating an image we're passing through the image from the request and we're passing in user from request.user and we create that object that's all it's doing and it's res responding with a HTTP response back to the JavaScript and that's all we're doing that's all we're doing in the back end so let's look at the front end so that's the JavaScript main.js look at my previous uh, videos if you want to deep dive in that there's a few, a lot of Ajax calls, 
because we're, we're using Ajax with Django forms, which is quite handy. Uh, but the one you want to look at is dropzone.js. You can see here we've got a directory drop zone. That is what we downloaded from Dropzone's website, but a dropzone.js. So this is how I'm programmatically adding that drop zone to the HTML. So we're uh, creating a variable here. So drop is the variable and it, we're just firing up a new drop zone and we're looking for the ID drop, no, sorry, did drop zone. So if we look in images HTML, that's it here. So it's a form, if I just, there we go. So the form ID is did drop zone. So this new drop zone that we're creating is from that ID. So straight out of the box, the, the default functionality is as you drag images to the drop zone, it then fires that image straight to the back end. That's how it works straight out of the box. So you need to add auto process queue to stop that behavior, which I like to do. I like to explicitly press the submit button to send them images to the gallery. You don't have to do that though, but that's what I've done in this case. The parent name is image. If you remember in the views.py, when we when we pull in uh, request.files.get and we're calling it image, well that is because we're calling it image here. The file size 0.5 megabytes. Clickable true, so if you click the drop zone, it opens up your directories. Accepted files, I believe in there you can actually just put images, but I've said I just want JPEGs and PNG files. The maximum files in this drop zone is 10. I don't know what the maximum is on drop zone. You'll have to look at the docs, but I've said 10. You can probably have a hundred for all I know, but um, I think 10 is a good number. And the preview template. So this is the HTML that is, so this is the HTML that drives that drop zone that you see in the, the, um, the when it's rendered out. And then what we've got is an init function and we've got a success function. So in the init function, we're looking for um, the query select. So we're looking for a button. In this case, the ID is image button. So we look here, yeah, ID image button. So that's the button that sits at the bottom, the purple button that sits at the bottom of the drop zone. That's this here. Drop zone JS, here we go. Right, so um, the URL, that is the action in the form on the HTML. So action forward slash drop zone image. So if you remember, that's the, um, the view that I was just talking about my drop zone equals this so it's this drop zone and we now refer to this drop zone as my drop zone in the, these um, three um, functions that we've got here so submit button event listener so when we click the button what we then do is we process that queue so if you remember up here we we said do not process the queue well now we're saying when we click the button process it so that's us explicitly saying send those images to the back end and create objects please We've then got on processing. So as when we're processing those images, we're sending them to the URL, which is explicitly written in the form. So images, form, we've got except. Yeah, so sorry, that's the action. So it's drop zone image. And we've got drop zone.js again. So then we've got complete. So when that image, when it's been completed, so when it's gone to the back end and it's got the response, remove the file from the drop zone. That's all there is to it. On the success, I did, uh, when I showed you the the, um, the example of the app a minute ago, it did come up with that alert it's because I haven't um, closed down this browser and opened up another one. But uh, you don't need that because if you have that in there, it adds the alert every time one image goes to the back end. So you'll have, if you added 10 images, you'll have 10 alerts. So we don't want that. So I've removed that. But that's it. That's the back end. Sorry, that's the front end. That's the JavaScript. That's all you need to do to add a drop zone JS to a Django project. I hope this video has been useful and I hope also that you can just take this project and slot it in to whatever you're working on. I'm Bobby, this is Decoding. Please subscribe and please like, it's massively helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.